morning, church family. Uh, Billy, if you can bring me that portable mic. I, I, I don't feel comfortable standing in one spot too long. And uh, I, I kind of move around. Thank you so much. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I was in contact with Brother Riot, uh, and we discussed me being here this morning. I got turned around with the GPS. It's not always faithful, and it's not always true. And I ended up somewhere out on 388 and by the airport. I made the wrong turn. It's been a while since, since the pandemic, uh, since we've been here. And uh, it's good to see the church family this morning, Ray and his family, and Corey has grown up to be a fine, handsome young man. I can remember when he was a little boy with my granddaughter, who used to visit us over at the Funiac. And uh, he told me he was 23, and I said, man, you're getting old. So it's, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We want to thank all of the participants this morning for taking part in the service because that's what makes the service well uh, organized. To the members and to the visitors, how many first-time members we've been here this morning? This is your first time being here. All right, we're, your first time, we're great. We just want to make certain that this will be a place this morning where you will want to come again. So all of the members that's going to be here, you make certain that you put your arms around this young lady and make her feel welcome that she is in the right place at the right time on the right day. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Our purpose as Seventh-day Adventists is to make you one with Christ. You know, that's why we exist. We exist to make others one with whom? With Christ. It's not about a day of worship, which is very, very important, but it is our relationship of how we uh, 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 carry ourselves among our co-workers within our own homes and around those whom we love. Amen? Amen. We always like to start with something humorous this morning to get us on the right track. The doctor had his patient, and he told his patients that jogging and exercise would add years to your life. And on the next visit, the patient told the doctor, he says, Doctor, I did exactly what you said, and I feel 10 years older already. It'll catch up in a minute. We want you to look at your neighbor, and I want you to look at your neighbor and smile and say, I'm not laughing at you, but I'm laughing with you. I'm not laughing at you, but I'm laughing with you. Because this is the place where we need to be this morning. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we ask you now to come down and worship with us this morning. Be a part. Be in this service. Let nothing be said or done without your approval. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will touch each one of us and bring us in an, in an anointing of agreement with you and with your word and with one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our topic, He's Alive, is not nothing new that you do not know. But uh, he's alive, and we're going to talk about, for a short period of time, the price of discipleship, the price of being a disciple for Christ. Are you with me this morning? I don't, I don't want you to fall asleep on me now. Uh, I know we had a little rain, but we're gonna, we, 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 we want to get through this as the best way that we can. What is discipleship? What is discipleship? I want you to understand something that you and I do not work, that you and I do not uh, 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 work for God, but we work with God. Are you with me? All right? Now, listen. 
in Acts chapter 16. You can go there in your Bibles this morning, Acts chapter 16, and we're going to move hurriedly because I'm looking at the enemy. That's the timekeeper. If you go to Acts chapter 16, we're going to look at the experiences of Paul and Timothy and Silas as they were disciples of Christ, all right, and the trials that they had to go through. And I'm going to re briefly go through this. Now, I'm going to give you five principles uh, uh, that, that you must understand about discipleship. Now, disciples, we must accept five things. Not necessarily in this order, but if you go to Acts chapter 16, uh, we're going to talk about that very, very briefly. As disciples... We must accept one divine guidance detour. In other words, disciples uh, must follow God's leading. Are you with me? All right. Disciples, uh, uh, number two, is disciples would encounter demonic uh, uh, distraction. In other words, once we uh, uh, become a disciple of Christ, Satan will do everything that he possibly can to get us off track. Are you, do, are you with me? Are you with me? All right. And then disciples need enemies because our enemies make us strong. And our enemies make us pray even harder. Are you with me now? Y'all got to go to the quiet. Disciples need enemies because our enemies make us pray longer. Disciples will and sometimes be jailed, all right? And lastly, our in, in, disciples will be in prison. You want to understand this. Imprisonment could be our pulpit as disciples. Are you with me? I'm going to go through these steps with you in Acts chapter 16 very, very, very quickly this morning. If you go with me now, Acts chapter 16, and I'm just going to give you a brief. The mission of the disciples is to proclaim that Jesus Christ lived. The mission of a disciple is to prove that Jesus Christ lived. We need to preach it. We need to live it. We need to believe it. All right? Because if we don't believe it, then we're just wasting our time. Isn't that right? Come on now. Talk to me. Uh, and... Uh, and Acts, I'm sorry, uh, Mark chapter 14, whose sister Julie read this morning in our scripture. Mark chapter 16. I told you to go to Acts 16. Go to Mark. Um, Mark 16. Mark says in verse 1. Mark 14 says in verse 1. He says... Uh, after two days, the feast and the Passover and unleavened bread and the priests and the scribes, they might take him to craft by craft and put him, talking of Christ, to death. But let me paraphrase. During the feast, it was the feast of the Passover and the priests and the scribes was plotting on how they wanted to get rid of Jesus. H have you ever been around someone who wants you, who does harm to you, and you say, I'm going to get you. I don't care what it takes, how long it takes, but I'm going to get you. These folks were out to kill Jesus. Are you with me now? They wanted to put him to death. They wanted to silence him. They wanted to get rid of Jesus and his message. And it goes on to say in Mark chapter 14 that Jesus was in the house of Simon the leper and a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of speconied, which was a very precious, uh, 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 expensive perfume, if you will. Now, I took the liberty to look up this herb. Now, speconied is an herb. And it is used as an anti-inflammatory bacterial purposes. 
Uh, Spicanine, uh, uh, it, it, it can help relieve stress, and, and it helps relieve de depression. Uh, this herb helps relieve anxiety and will help you if who have one who have insomnia. All right? It will help also, get this, it said, now the scripture said it was a precious ointment. It will help relieve dandruff. You know, head and shoulders works. But spicnine works even better. All right? Uh, it helps relieve joint pain. And in my further study of this precious ointment, it also helps relieve, now this is for ladies only, PMS pain, a precious ointment. It helps relieve migraine headaches, athletic feet, constipation, and pancreatitis. So this is not just an ordinary ointment. This is a precious ointment. And it says that, that this woman opened up the box and she broke it and she poured the oil on the head of who? Jesus Christ. The people were angry why she would waste this expensive oil. But what she was doing in verse 8, she was anointing Christ's body before he was buried. And in verse 10 through 28, it talks about Judas, who identified to be the betrayer of Christ. Now, I want to submit to you that there is a Judas in every camp. If you are serving God, there is a Judas in every camp because someone is looking to trip you at any cost. It, you, if you are in your household, there is a Judas. Your relatives might not understand. I, we have a young lady uh, at, at our church in Fort Walton, which we bring you greetings from this morning. She is the only one in her family who is an about seven-day Adventist uh, a member. And every time she visited with her family, she shared that they would ridicule her from worshiping on Sabbath. There's a Judas in every camp. Christ now have the disciples together in the upper room with his last 12 disciples. He told them that they were going to be scattered and because of their allegiance to him. It was also that Christ said to Peter, he would deny him three times before the rooster crow strikes. Peter said, not I. I will never deny you in any way. And in verse chapter, verse 32, Jesus now retreats to his favorite place. I got to ask you a question. Do you have a favorite place where you go to meet with Christ. It might be in the bathroom. Huh? It might be in the bedroom. Some of you may have the luxury of having a study where you can go into, but some of us may not have that luxury because if you got to contend uh, uh, with the children, you have to contend with someone wanting to turn on the TV and turn it up as loud as they possibly can that you can't rest. Do you have a secret place where you can talk with Jesus? Sometimes to have that secret place, Curtis, you might have to wake up early before everybody else wake up. So that you can have, so that you can have that place of solitude where just you and Jesus can have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Are you with me this morning? In Jesus Christ's favorite place, it was in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Christ spent his time with God. It was in the garden when Christ prayed early mornings and late at night. He took with him Peter, James, and John to pray with him. But all of those individuals, all of those faithful disciples, they were too, too tired and very sleepy. I got a question for you. Have you ever been too tired to pray? 
Have you ever been too sleepy to pray? I know I have. I'm t- when things start getting rough and the burdens get heavy, you sometimes you can't pray like you want to pray. All you can do is just lean on the side of the bed and say, Lord, help me. We toss and we turn all night and sometimes inside our belly aches. And we don't know and we just see like if somebody can just take a knife and cut that part of me out of me while I am having my, 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 my moments of despair, I need some comfort. I need some comfort. And, 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 and when you, you just hurt because you're too tired and you're too sleepy. And so the disciples could not stay awake to pray with the king of kings. It was in the garden when Judas, as we read in our uh, scripture this morning by Sister Julie, it was in the garden when Judas led the priest to him and where he might find Jesus. It was in the garden that Judas betrayed him with a what? With a kiss. Remember the Story of Samson and Delilah. You got to be careful who you're kissing on. Isn't that right? Come on, young folks. Uh, you, you, you start kissing on the wrong folks, you might be kissing up on your death. Uh, y'all not talking to me this morning. Huh? You, 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 you can't be kissing everybody. Everybody don't love Raymond. Huh? See, see, see. Because I'm, I'm talking from scripture here that Judas betrayed the king of kings with a kiss. Delilah betrayed uh, uh, Samson with a what? With a kiss. Because his mama said, boy, out of all these women over here, isn't that not, not one that you can choose to be your wife? She said, mama, she pleases me. And you know she had to kiss him. To get, learn all of his secrets. Are you with me this morning thus far? Moving right along. It was in the garden. That Peter cut off the ear of the enemy. It was in the garden that they arrested Judas. Listen, sometimes, sometimes... In our trials will come when you and I are in the garden. When the closer you get with Christ, the closer your relationship build, the closer that you your character start resembling the Lord. Trials will increase in your life. The closer. It is in the garden. When you go in the garden, your trials will get heavier. The trial was not the trial of the century, but Christ's trial was one for eternity. Hear me now. There was, some of you may remember Murdoch, the trial of Mr. Murdoch. And it was about greed. And there was uh, just recently they had the Doomsday Moms trial on television, on court, uh, court cam. The trials of O.J. Simpson, the trials of Charles Mont- Manson and Ted Bundy and Scott Peterson. Some of you probably remember some of these trials. Rodney King and George Zimmerman, Martha Stewart, where she was, was, was arrested for, 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 for tax evasion. Bill Clinton, his impeachment, uh, Watergate with Mr. Nixon, the George Floyd incident, trials, and the former president indicted for felonies. Famous trials, but Christ's trial was for eternity of mankind. Hear me. Hear me if you will. Christ's trials was his pulpit. Remember what we pointed out those five points. Christ's trial began with him before the high priest in the Sanhedrin. Christ's trial was 
the trial for eternity of life. Peter, one of his faithful servants, one of his faithful uh, 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 disciple, he followed him from a distance. False witnesses testified against Jesus. I'm still in Mark 14, verse 56. The priest was upset. The people spit on him and they hit him and they condemned him to be guilty of death. Peter denies him. It was this Peter who said, never will I deny you. It was this Peter who cut off the ear of the soldier. It was this Peter who could not watch and sleep just one hour with the master. It was this Peter who was in the school of discipleship for Christ for three years. He under, under the doctor of the PhD degree, the teacher, Christ himself, the directorate of divine divinity, healing and restoration. Peter could not yet stay awake one hour to pray with the master. This Peter, whose character was transformed and was seen by others, but not by him. This Peter, this Peter went from information to transformation. This Peter, who said, I don't know him. This Peter was identified as one with Christ because the change of his character, not of his environment. This Peter, whom Christ prayed for. Under the course of discipleship, you and I must remember prayer is the key. When we encounter difficulties, when we walk with Christ, our character change. Let me explain what I'm talking about. There is a saying that says if you sleep with dogs, you wake up with what? Fleas. Isn't that right? So, so I'm talking about Peter. I'm talking about Peter now. Listen now. He had an encounter with Christ and his character changed, but he didn't know it. And this Peter tried to blend in with the crowd. Um, how many cooks we got? I, I, I don't need to know. I don't need to know. But I do know this about cooking. If you try to bake a cake and you put all the ingredients in there, right? And if you don't blend the ingredients in with, if you don't blend the eggs and the meat, I mean, and, 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 and the milk and the butter and, and with the flour, if it's just all thrown in there, now, I'm going to ask you, Wyatt, if she was making that cake, Sister Wyatt, if you was making that cake, would you have Brother Wyatt say, lick the size of the, of the bowl to tell me how does it taste? He's not going to do it because it's not what? Blend it in. But you see, are y'all with me now? You got to blend everything in if it's going to come out palatable. All right, so Peter tried to blend in with the crowd. He tried to blend in because the Bible says that he followed Christ from a distance. In other words, when he was trying to follow Christ, uh, he didn't want folks to notice it. Huh? Have you ever been that way? 
You know, when you, you got a new one, well, you know, I, I'm going to a new church right now, and they worship on Saturday versus on Sunday. So therefore, therefore, I don't want my friends to know uh, uh, that I can't go. So I'm going to follow him from a distance. Are you with me this morning? Peter followed him from a distance. Listen, listen. When you follow Christ, young people, don't be ashamed. I, I, I know it's tough. I, I just want to, I want to take a minute to talk to the young folks. I know it's tough being the only one in a class. I, I, I've been there. I've been there. I know it's tough. And, and let, let me tell you something. I know what it's like to have to be made fun of because of your religious denomination and your religious belief. I know what it's like when they poke fun at you. They used to, they used to come by my house on Friday night and they would say, uh, Harold, are you going to the game tonight? They knew I wasn't going. because I, And I would tell them my mama wouldn't let me go. Now, I wanted to go. But mama, uh, but I'll put it, I, 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 I tell it, I'm going to just tell the truth. I put it back on my mama, Kurt. I say, my mama won't let me go. You see? But I'm glad that mama wouldn't let me go because some of those same individuals that poked fun of me while we were growing up, unfortunately, some of them took a bad detour in their relationship and some of them are pushing up daisies today. I went to a many funerals of my classmates. But I want you to understand something this morning. That young folks, when you follow Christ, your character change. Even when Peter was following Christ from a distance, one of the witnesses says, that's him because I saw him with Christ. And she pointed him out. Peter was devastated. In chapter 15, the trial of Christ went before Pilate. The king, he had power to grant pardon to a criminal or to anyone of the people's choice. And uh, he can send this one to death or he can let them live. And the people chose Barabbas. Give us Barabbas, not Jesus. And they had seen the miracles and they had heard of the miracles that Jesus had performed. But they didn't want him. They didn't want it. They didn't want it. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was a thief. He was a murderer. He was an insurrectionist. And he stirred up mess. Have you ever been around folks who stir up mess? Huh? Huh? I'm talking about stir up mess. Every time you get around them folks, you know something is about to happen because they, oh, she going to start something and it ain't going to be pretty. Every time she want to stir up something, go to a family, release, uh, a family reunion. It's going to, you don't want to go because you know, you know, it's going to be a mess. Barabbas, wherever he went, he stirred up a mess. And the people wanted him instead of wanting Christ. The trial of Christ, listen, the trial of Christ, it was quick. No one came to his defense. No one was there to delay or dismiss, dismiss the charges. No one came. Jesus had no attorney to appeal his case before Pilate. There was no uh, a high court of judges. 
uh, 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 to to issue a state uh, 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 of delay, uh, kick the trial down the road for later sentencing. They put a crown of thorns on his head and they beat him and they spit on him and, 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 and they shouted, crucify him. Crucify him. They led him from the courthouse to the cross. They led him to Calvary. They led him to the cross. They thrust the cross into the ground. They pierced his hands and his feet. They placed him between two thieves. One who mocked him. And the other one said, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. It was on the cross of mercy. It was on the cross where redemption and grace and pardon and forgiveness, salvation, and eternity was granted to one last soul, one for whom Christ died was the trial for eternal life. And in verse 42, it says, it was preparation day. Now, this is important. Not, and what, what day is preparation day? According to verse 42 of Mark of Acts, Mark 15, all right? It says preparation day was the day before what? The day before Sabbath. Now, and it was important at this time that you understand this. Now, we as Adventists, we believe that preparation day is what? Friday. And on preparation day, when I was a little boy, now I don't know about you, when I was a little boy, mama said you got to get your shoes shined, you got to get your clothes on, you got to get everything in order because Sabbath is here and because there are certain things that you couldn't, could and could not do on Sabbath. Are you with me? So we had to have everything in order on Friday, right? Because Sabbath was here. Let's see what the scripture says as we go along with this thing. Now, and so it was on preparation day, which was the day before what? The Sabbath. And uh, Joseph of Amathea went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus because at this time, the, the Jews, they believed that, hey, we got to get all the dead bodies off the, off, uh, 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 off the cross before what? The Sabbath what? Come in. We need to get them down. So that's when Ju Judas of Am I mean Joseph of Amathea, when he went and asked for the body of Christ. And, and it says, Joseph of Amathea was a secret what? Admirer. Of whom? Christ. Some of us were secret admirers because we didn't want folks to know who we were. Brother Oral, you know, when you was growing up and some of I, I, I don't want them to know that, you know, I can't, I don't eat certain things. Oh, I, why, why don't you? It makes me sick. No, we need to tell them the truth. Huh? We, 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 we quick to say, well, why, why you don't eat it? Well, it, it? It makes me sick. That's why I don't eat it. No, it didn't make you sick. We didn't eat it because we knew it was the wrong thing to eat. But when we was young, we weren't, we weren't bold enough, why, to, to, to say that. But now as we got older, we tell the truth. Because what? The Bible says there are certain things that we should and should not what? Eat. Tell the truth. Some of us, some of us are afraid to tell the truth. Listen, Joseph was a secret admirer and he asked for the tomb, for Jesus to be buried in his tomb. Permission granted. Mark chapter 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was what? Pass. Early on the what day? Verse 2. First day of the week at the rising of the what? Son, so we can see now where we have where Sunday worship comes into play. We worship on Sunday because Christ what rose on Sunday. Did Christ tell us to rise on Sunday? Did you read that in the Bible? No, because the Sabbath had what passed, and the next day was the what first day of the week 
and that pointed out that Jesus what? Arose from the grave. Moving quickly. In the book of Luke, Luke said that he recorded this scene by saying, why seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. You can't have life if you are surrounded by dead things. You hear me? You can't have life if you're surrounded by dead things and dead people. And you are not going anywhere but down. Young folks, hear me, and old folks too. We need to surround ourselves and put ourselves in the company of those individuals who's going to give us life. If you surround yourself with folks who are negative, Come on now, uh, sooner, sooner or later, you're going to become negative. There are many individuals who are in the institutions today called the jailhouse, all right, or imprisonment because they didn't commit a crime, but they were in the company of those who committed and they were sentenced to, all right? So we cannot surround... Young people, you have to be careful who you associate with. Because if you associate yourselves with the wrong folks, you are going to go to jail to, for something that you did not do. But you went because you were associated with that individual. Know who your friends are, okay, because everybody is not your friend. They will use you until they use you up and spit you out when the chewing gum has got to be unsweetened and it don't taste good because you, have, you, you, you are no use to them. Listen. Peter. I want to point something out to you. Disciples in Mark chapter 16. To be a disciple, you have to be a little crazy. The reason I say that, and I'm going to point it out to you in Scripture. Disciples of Christ are called, remember what I said, as disciples, we are called to preach that Jesus lives, right? Okay, and I just told you that you can't associate uh, and move forward if you associate with dead stuff. Did I tell you that? All right, now listen. If we are serving a risen Savior, uh, if we were serving a dead Jesus, we ain't going nowhere. Huh? If you are serving, you, you remember Elijah when he told the prophets, call on your God. That he'll bring down fire. Elijah was over there, you know, probably sipping on some iced tea or something like that, some lemonade. He said, call him a little louder because your God might be what? Just asleep. Wake him up. Okay. And when Elijah called on God, fire came what? Down and consumed the altar and they poured water on it and so forth and so forth. You know the story. So, so you have to realize, listen, you have to realize that you serve what kind of Savior? A risen Savior. Listen. In chapter 6, uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse 7, the disciples are called with an urgency, craziness, love to follow Christ. So was the message of Peter. With an urgency to go and tell. With an urgency of craziness to tell the story that he is alive. It says here in verse 7, But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter. And who? And Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Let me move forward. 
with an urgency, with craziness to tell somebody. You, 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 if you go tell somebody, hey, man, he, he, ain't, he ain't dead, he's alive, folks going to look at you like you're crazy. All right? I, I wish I had time to share a story with you, but I don't. With love, find the disciples and Peter and Peter and Peter. Why did he say and Peter? Because it was that same Peter who did what? Denied him. It was that same Peter that denied him. But Christ had not, remember Christ says, Peter, I'm praying for you. Because the devil himself wants to sift you as what? Wheat. And Peter. The question that I'm going to ask you this morning is this. Who are the and Peters this morning? These are they who follow Christ from a distance. These are they who say, I'll, I'll never deny you. The and Peters, these are they who, who, who Christ prayed for, that Satan will not sift us as wheat. The and Peters, they, they, they preach with the Holy Ghost boldness. The and Peters, they ran to the tomb. The and Peters, they came to be baptized. The and Peters remembered the words when, when, when it came out. They, they, to, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. The question is this morning, are you an and Peter? Do we tell them we serve a risen Savior? This morning, Many of you have made a decision years ago to be baptized. But the question is, have you been converted? Have you been able to stand boldly before your friends when you go off to college on your jobs and tell them, why I can't come to the office party on Friday nights. Because when you can stand boldly and tell them that, then you become an Ann Peter. See, Peter had to experience, had to experience that agony. He had to go down the path that he really didn't want to go through. But he realized, he realized the mistake he made. That's why he ran to the tomb. You've been baptized, but you've not been converted. Some of you may have been baptized, but you may be contemplating rebaptism, I don't know. Some of you may be wanting to reconnect with Christ. I don't know. But if that's where your heart is today, we want you to journey down the path for discipleship so that you will be able to proclaim the words he lived. He lives. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us. Sometimes, Lord, our walk with you is not where it needs to be. We sometimes get away from your presence like Peter. But because of your grace and compassion, we followed you from a distance. And we thank you for remembering Peter. And Peter was one who with Holy Ghost boldness preached and 3,000 were baptized. Help us, Lord, to make a decision to stand for you and all that we say and all that we do. Let us not be afraid to say I serve a king. I serve Jesus Christ.
the Son of God. I ask your Heavenly Father to be with every young person here today under the sound of my feeble voice who is making a decision right now as to whether or not they want to serve you or deny you. I pray that your Holy Spirit will fall on them and they will be able to be a positive influence for you. Be with us as parents, grandparents, that our lives will represent you in every facet of what our, what our character should be. Now, Lord, as we prepare for the meal, we ask that you will bless it. Be with those who prepared it. Be with this church as they move forward, as we await your coming. And when we will be able to look up and say, Lo, we have waited for him, and he will save us. In Jesus' name we pray, and let us all say, Amen.